is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Tonight, reporting from Washington. Good evening. This is an important day in American politics. The 100th Congress has been sworn in. The Democrats are now in charge of both the House and the Senate. No sooner had the new Congress convened than the Senate voted overwhelmingly to give its select committee on Iran the power and jurisdiction to investigate. One Senate committee has already finished its investigation, but voted last night not to release its report. Well, that wasn't good enough for many politicians. And we begin on Capitol Hill with ABC's Britt Hume. The outgoing chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee waved the committee's 133-page report on the Iran-Contra affair in the air on the Senate floor this afternoon, pleading, along with other Republicans, for the document's immediate release. We cannot wait until February when hearings begin. We cannot wait until October when a report is released to know what we already know. It does not serve the national interest to keep an issue alive month after month after month after month after month. Why all the hurry? It's all going to be revealed. Everything is going to be made known. But it can only, everything can only be made known after the select committee has done its work, after the independent council has done his work. Byrd and the Democrats now control the Senate and had no intention of releasing the report, which they insist is incomplete. Sources say the document is basically a chronology of the Iran arms sales, with only limited information about the alleged diversion of funds to the Nicaraguan countries. These sources say the report cites no evidence of any presidential knowledge of the alleged diversion of money, but does find that some of the arms sales proceeds, $8.5 million according to one source, were put into a Swiss bank account earmarked for the countries. This occurred, the source said, despite the fact that Iran had refused to pay the full amount it was billed for some of the arms and that some of those who had invested in the sales had not gotten their money out of the deal. But the committee's efforts to find whether the Contras ever got any of the money were stymied by lack of access to the necessary bank records. Republicans finally gave up trying to force that report's release and mostly joined the overwhelming vote to get the special Iran committee started. The committee's deadline is August 1st. Not soon enough for Republicans, but record time in the eyes of Democrats who are already talking about an extension. Britt Hume, ABC News, on Capitol Hill. Vice President Bush went to see Mr. Reagan in the hospital today, not long after the president had another positive report about his health. Here's our White House correspondent, Sam Donaldson. Appearing at a hospital window while waiting for a visit from the First Lady, the president looked fit. How do you feel? Fine. When are you getting out? Oh, I think maybe day after tomorrow. Hey. Hi. Hi, buddy. If only you'd be wearing a red dress so I could recognize you. <laughs> How are you? When Mrs. Reagan joined her husband at the window, she took over giving the answers. Mr. President, when will you be leaving? We'll see. Doctors say the president's recovery is excellent. No cancer found in his prostate. His strength, good. Though his wife wouldn't let him use it to try to close her window. The president spent an hour with his chief of staff, Donald Regan, and his new national security advisor, Frank Carlucci, the back of whose head is visible in this White House-supplied photo. And he saw Vice President Bush, who emerged from the hospital to denounce the Democrats' argument that the Senate Intelligence Committee report on Iran shouldn't be released because it is incomplete. You know, I don't know when complete is complete. But I think a good way to start, quote, getting this behind us would be to release that, unquote, to release that, that report. Bush was asked why the White House won't release Lieutenant Colonel North's chronology of events, if it indeed wants all the facts out. Sam, I'll look into that. I don't know the answer to it, but I'd like to get the Senate to release their information. They've been given access to all of this. What the White House is able to, uh, to release Given the creation of the special prosecutor, I don't know. The president is undergoing one more cancer test late today, a CAT scan, before being released from the hospital later this week. But it may be some time before Mr. Reagan himself speaks out again on the Iranian story. Asked whether there will be a news conference soon, Press Secretary Larry Speak said today, we don't normally hold news conferences during the month of January. Sam Donaldson, ABC News, the White House. Last night, ABC's Bob Zelnick reported that it is unlikely CIA Director William Casey will ever be able to return to his job following last month's operation in which a cancerous tumor was removed from his brain. 
today. Sources tell Zelnick the president has told aides to stop talking about replacing Mr. Casey. Mr. Reagan is said to be concerned about insulting an old friend, and he doesn't want to jeopardize Mr. Casey's already delicate condition. When we come back, we'll talk about the new Congress with two of the leading figures in the Senate. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings in Washington. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. The top quality cars and trucks on the road today. You know, for my money, all the quality claims from here to Tokyo and back again can't stand up to six simple words. Five years or 50,000 miles. That's the warranty you get when you buy any car or truck built by Chrysler. With some other car makers, after two or three years, it's so long, off Weeders Ain or Sayonara. Which makes you wonder, how much confidence do those guys really have in the quality they're talking about? At Chrysler, we've backed over five million engines, over five million powertrains, over five million car and truck bodies with 550 protection. If they fail or fall apart, we fall on our faces. But something is holding us up, quality. So the next time you hear somebody talking quality, take a look at his warranty and take a look at ours. To me, it's simple. If you're looking for who builds them best, take a look at who backs them best. Now we're going to go back to Capitol Hill. The Iran affair was certainly topic A on this first day of the new session, but there are all sorts of new problems for the 100th Congress and plenty of new members who want to deal with them. Here's ABC's Charles Gibson. Today they were sworn in. Do you solemnly swear? As one member said, starting tomorrow, they'll be sworn at. There were changes of the guard in both chambers of this 100th Congress. The vice president had the embarrassment of presiding over swearings in and signings in that put the Senate, 55 to 45, back in Democratic hands. In the House, no change in party control, but the old gives way to the new. Old Speaker Tip O'Neill gives way to new Speaker Jim Wright. Wright promised capital cooperation with the White House. The two branches each need the cooperation of the other if our system is to work. And cooperation is a two-way street. Jim Wright is the 48th House Speaker, the most important legislative job in the world, he claims. To pretend that I were blasé and sophisticated and uh, just taking it in my stride would be trying to kid myself. Wright has represented Fort Worth, Texas since 1954. He speaks for Fort Worth. He speaks for the country. For half his life, he's been in the House. Twice, he had Senate ambitions. He wanted Lyndon Johnson's seat, but never made it. So help you run. I do. But he's had solid support back home. 8,000 gathered to watch today's swearing in back in Fort Worth. Wright will likely be no less partisan than was Tip O'Neill, but he'll involve himself more in legislative details. In the 100th Congress, that legislation will involve a trade bill that the White House already calls protectionist. Budget battles again over social programs, Star Wars, and Contra funding. This week, Congress will likely pass clean water legislation, costing $18 billion that the president vetoed last year. But the battles are to come. Today was for celebrating, and a chance to show the kids what daddy or mommy does for a living. Not that the kids always care. Charles Gibson, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And joining us briefly tonight, the new majority leader in the Senate, Robert Byrd, and the new minority leader, Republican Robert Dole. Senator Byrd, let me begin with you. Is the Senate going to be preoccupied with Iran for a while? The Senate will not be preoccupied with I Iran. That's the purpose of the, the establishment of the Select Committee. The Select Committee will put the Iran investigation over on a special track. There's, there are 11 persons on that committee. Mr. Dole and I are not on that committee. We'll be able to put our full time into dealing with the rest of the nation's problems. And we're going to uh, operate the Senate in that fashion, letting the Iran investigation go forward on that track. We deal with the other problems on this. Senator Dole, President Reagan has two years left to put his stamp on the nation's legislation. What do you think his chances are? I think his chances are excellent. Uh, we talked with the president, both of us, Senator Byrd and myself. Uh, uh, he indicated he wished to cooperate. And cooperation, Your Honor, doesn't mean you have to give in. It means you have to be, be some flexibility. And I believe the president uh, is still very strong. He has a lot of support across this country. And I, I think we can work together very well. Senator Byrd, do you agree with that assessment? Yes, I do. Uh, 
we want to cooperate. We've extended the hand of cooperation. The president says he wants to cooperate. The American people want us to cooperate. That's what they said in November. Let's do it. Thank you both very much. Later.